To begin the honorary degree conferral, I'd like to ask Chair of the Newberry College Board of, Board of Trustees, Margo Winslow, to please escort our honored recipient, Dr. Maisha Minton Jordan, to the podium. Today, it is a great honor on behalf of Newberry College to confer the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters upon Dr. Maisha Minton Jordan, the highest honor Newberry College can bestow. Dr. Jordan is the president and chief executive officer of the Dimmick Center, the largest employer in Roxbury, Massachusetts, and the second largest health center in Boston. In 2018, Dr. Jordan was recognized in Boston Magazine's list of the top 100 most influential people in Boston. It is with privilege and honor to confer the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters upon Dr. Maisha Mitten Jordan. Dr. Jordan, you are a leader and doer. You provide a voice for those who don't have one. You create opportunity. You are an advocate. You are committed. You are an inspiration. You are dedicated. You do the work that needs to be done. You remind us all of the importance of serving our communities for a higher good. Therefore, it is with great pride and by the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the Board of Trustees of Newberry College, I confer upon you, Maisha Mitten Jordan, the degree of humane letters Honoris Quasa. Welcome to the class of 2019. To deliver today's commencement address, please welcome Dr. <laughs> Dr. Victor Jordan, our newest member of the class of 2019. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is an incredible honor to be here with all of you today. Um, and I would like to thank the leadership of Newberry College, the trustees, all of the faculty, the students, for inviting me to speak with, um, with you today. And first of all, I'd like to extend a hearty congratulations to the graduating 2019 class of Newberry College. Congratulations once again. It's an honor to be among you. You've earned a remarkable achievement, and you and your families and friends should be incredibly proud. And to the esteemed faculty, I hope that all of you take great pride in knowing that you have truly met the mission of Newberry College. You've inspired your students to become independent thinkers, valuable collaborators, and global-minded citizens, and I applaud all of you. <laughs> Graduates. You have earned an important responsibility today. You are not only college graduates who have been on an incredible learning journey, you are also the last graduating class of Newberry College, and its legacy will live on through each of you. This institution will always be a part of you. Therefore, the actions that you take from this day forward will be of utmost importance. How will you live up to carrying the spirit and mission of Newberry College forward? What choices will you now make that will define the next chapter of your lives? How will you live the Newberry College motto and flourish? To answer these questions, we can think about ourselves in a simple yet powerful way. Consider that first, at our core, we are human beings. No matter what else defines us, we are living, breathing entities blessed with the ability to reason. Our ability to reason empowers us to consider, to ponder, and to learn. When we are born into this world, we begin the process of learning, of learning who we are, our cultural traits, our beliefs, and over our lifetimes, we form ideas about ourselves and others. We are also born with the capacity to care. This is a powerful feeling, one that can propel us to make changes in ourselves and for other people as well as our communities. And throughout this ongoing process of self-evolution, our core remains. We are human beings, but how do we remain humane? 
As you graduate today and complete your time at Newberry College, what does being humane mean to each of you? Empathy and compassion are the first words that come to mind when I think of the meaning of humanity, a caring and understanding that can influence our interactions with others. Today, many of us feel that we need to restore and enhance our capacity for empathy. We need to restore and strengthen our ability to connect across differences and find common good. I stand before you today as a woman of color, a mother, a physician, and a community leader. But when you take those labels away, I am merely human. My emotions and ability to feel are no different than yours, his, or hers. I ask you to take a moment and look at the person seated next to you. You may see a fellow classmate, a colleague, a family member, or friend. This person may look and act differently than you, but as you turn and smile or shake hands with your neighbor, know that at your core, you have the power to reason, to care, and to make change. And speaking of a change maker, a couple years ago I had the opportunity to meet and talk with Congressman John Lewis. He visited the Demick Center and spent a morning with our staff and board members talking about community health. As we know, this is a man who fought for our civil rights. He was bloodied, beaten, and jailed so that all of us and all of you could have the right to graduate from college, to vote, and to reach your full potential without barriers. On a very personal level, I feel that Congressman Lewis' efforts have made me the person that I am today. But sitting next to him, I felt incredible emotion. I was completely overwhelmed with gratitude and pride. When he was asked with how he deals with the challenges in our world today, the injustice, the suffering, the fighting, his simple yet powerful answer was that we must continue to have hope. We really have no choice but to have hope if we want to make change. If this man who has endured so much could still be hopeful, how can I or anyone in this room not be hopeful? So I am inspired and determined to maintain the hope that Congressman Lewis instilled in me that day. And today, I feel hopeful and inspired by each of you. As a president of the Demick Center, one of the most important things that I can do is to lead with hope, lead towards solutions, and create partnerships and strategies to face and overcome challenges. I also do my best to instill hope in my daughters and in all of you, our future. And as a physician, I am charged with fulfilling the Hippocratic Oath, an oath that pledges to do no harm and to help all whom I encounter. For this, that means that every person I see deserves the best that I can give, regardless of any label they impose on themselves or that others give them. I have never forgotten that oath, and it has become a part of who I am as a person, mother, wife, and leader. Even though I have been at Demick for over 12 years, I clearly remember the first time I interviewed there. At the in end of an intense interview day, I knew that what I had seen and experienced at Demick changed my idea of what type of medicine I wanted to practice and where I wanted to work, and what my life in medicine could be. I had found a mission that resonated with who I am as a person, and I knew that Demick was the place that I wanted to commit myself to. This was a pivotal moment for me. It was exciting, invigorating, enlightening, and at the same time a little daunting. But it was not a unique moment. You too can feel this way. I encourage you to push yourselves in ways that you may not have originally thought possible and explore ideas you may not have previously considered. Never stop asking yourself if you have found the position, the career, the community that resonates with who you are makes you passionate about doing the work and fills you with a sense of purpose. So how does this happen? How do you find a career, a pathway, that links with who you are as an individual and with a mission and a deep commitment to your chosen profession? I'd like for you to take a moment to think about how you have been defining yourself and how you continue to define yourself. What are your personal values? What is important to you? I can tell you when I was sitting in your seat almost 25 years ago, I didn't have a clue. And that's okay, you don't need to have a clear answer at this moment. But since I graduated from college, I have drawn direct connections from the Hippocratic Oath that I took to the mission of my organization and to my own personal values of transparency, respect, accountability, and communication. So I'd like for you to start this process now. I'd like for you to think of one or more words that are important to you characteristics or terms that capture the essence of who you are and who you strive to be. As an example, you might say freedom or trust is, is of tantamount importance to you. 
I discovered that accountability is one of my most vital values. You can certainly have more than one, but I encourage you to think of no more than five. Think of these words today. Write them down. Think of them every day, maybe as a daily mantra, but help them make, you, make sure you use those words to help you look at your choices through the lens of your values. If you make choices that reflect your values, you will find alignment in your lives. At the same time, understand that your values can evolve as you evolve and that this is a reflection of your expected growth and development. So while it seemed at the time to be luck or coincidence to happen upon my role of Chief Medical Officer, then President and CEO of the Demick Center, what it really was for me was an alignment of my values and the work that I chose to do. This is the foundation for the next chapter of your lives. I know that you may be feeling all sorts of things right now, pride in your accomplishments, gratitudes to family, teachers, friends, and role models, even nervousness or fear about what comes next in your lives. These are all completely normal and expected feelings. My simple advice to you amidst, in the midst of those feelings is to use this moment as a source of inspiration. Inspiration is personal. It comes from different sources for all of us. It often starts with people like Congressman Lewis, human beings coming together to work towards something even greater than each of us as individuals. You have been blessed to be a part of the Newberry College community for the past four years, learning with others, brainstorming new ideas together, making positive changes for our community. As you move forward from this day, Continue this important work to help our world heal, grow, and change. Ask the tough questions, listen to the responses, and find the answers that challenge us all to do better. Stand up for our collective rights and resist our collective wrongs. Remember that we are humans with the innate ability to reason, ponder, and dream, and we have an internal capacity to care. Your experience in Newberry College has enhanced your ability to learn from others who may not think or look like you. You have become global citizens and learned how to appreciate the diversity of thought and experience and to see those as assets. You are now ready to develop the tools and approaches that will help us to heal this earth, heal the pain, and cultivate the joy that we see in each other because you will remember that we are connected, that we are joined by the threads of humanity, and that we all deserve to be treated with respect and empathy. Having the chance to address you today and looking around this room, I feel confident that you are already gaining a sense of hope, an inspiration to make change, an optimism for finding your passion, and above all, an unwavering commitment to care about others. In these ways, today and every day moving forward, you will live up to the mission and legacy of Newberry College to be humane leaders, tenacious in your pursuit of justice and equity. I congratulate you today on this milestone and look forward to your deepened resolve and your continued pursuit and attainment of your goals and dreams. But most of all, I look forward to seeing you live the Newberry College motto, let yourselves and your lives flourish. Thank you. Thank you.